is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey, welcome to Season 4, Episode 17 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and the actual name of this podcast is now The Chris Abraham Show. But after uh, four, three or four seasons, kind of got programmed into it. I'm going to do um, State of the Union, talking about myself, talking about what's going on with me, and talking about some really interesting stuff that has recently happened with my cardiologist and with my rowing machine and with um, generally the next step in my life. So, uh, TLDR, top of the top of the uh, the list is that I went to the cardiologist and everything's great, um, except my weight. I am uh, <clears throat> my heart is in sinus rhythm. I'm not having any AFib attacks. Um, my sugars and so forth are not the best so um, because I'm when I was recently I was 350 pounds at uh, 6 foot 3 but uh, when I went to the doctor I was 340 pounds and we decided it was really important to go radical now one of the radical measures could be taking a, uh, an injection that would suppress my appetite and also work to suppress uh, blood sugar and issues like that. The other thing that we talked about at the office, not on the phone later, was doing something extreme in terms of diet to shake my biome, to shake my shake up my uh, my gut biology to remove all the, th the things that I eat that bring inflammation to my body to try to weed out the things I'm allergic to or respond badly to uh, the things that make me phlegm and all that other kind of stuff and <clears throat> we decided that we would go carnivore diet for the next three months which if you look it up is really only water, black coffee, bone broth, black tea, green tea, uh, the other types of things like ginger and uh, all the other types of teas as long as there aren't any sweeteners in them or any milks in them. Then beef, chicken, um, butter is okay, not at all vegetable oil or olive oil or anything else like that so when I come back I'm going to talk more about it we'll um, we'll see the, the thing about it is that it has as much to do with making sure you maximize fat fat intake as you do maximize protein and minimize carb it's a zero carb diet so so it's not the kind of thing. Carnivore diet cannot be um, the result of eating a bunch of lean meat, you know, like chicken breast and so forth. So <clears throat> it's not a high protein diet. It's a high fat, moderate protein diet. We'll talk more about it afterwards. We'll also talk about my walking. We'll talk about my rowing. And we'll talk about all that other fun stuff. Okay? Thank you. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. Let me know if you like Chris Abraham Show rather than Chris Cast. T 
much easier for people to find me on social media and on search, so why not that? It was easy to do. Um, so, I have three months to get back into a modicum of trajectory towards losing weight. And the, for me, my ideal weight is 100 kilograms, which is about 220, 221 pounds US. Um, so the process to do it is to follow this carniv carnivore diet and with the associated need to make sure I drink enough water, plenty, plenty of water. Also, uh, make sure that I get enough electrolytes because as anybody who knows or has done the keto diet or whatnot, um, the keto flu is a real thing. It can really bring you down. And also to make sure that my system remains regular and all that other fun stuff. So we'll see what happens. Um, I have three months to do it. I joke uh, with my cardiologist, Dr. Lux. I joke with him about how uh, he chose the perfect time, which is um, the time during which all the celebrations happen. You know, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Christmas, etc., etc. And, you know, people have their parties, and there's even Halloween and all that stuff. Nothing but meat, water, coffee, tea. Butter and When it comes to the meat you need to find as oh and, and sometimes they want you to have something like liverwurst or or um, organ meat and So the way that's been looking recently The last few or few days is it just seems to be that I eat a lot of 80% um, lean I'd like 73% lean but 80% lean ground beef uh, eggs, whole eggs, like fried, and lots and lots of butter to up the fat content. And then black coffee, lots of water when I wake up, lots of water all day, lots of water before I go to sleep. The app I'm using recommends 155 ounces, which is, I think, over a gallon of water, but Someone I just talked to in the um, in the uh, carnivore diet says that that much water is mostly for people who have a lot of carbs. But I'm told that because there's so little water in meat that you need more water because vegetables and so forth have a lot of water in them. So this is a, a winging it kind of diet. Nobody knows what they're on about. But I feel pretty good on it. I. Um, I try to intermittent fast 20 of 24 daily hours, so I make sure that I eat all my uh, fatty meat um, within a you know, two to four hour window. Um, I plan to diversify <clears throat> from just, um, I tried to buy steak, but apparently I just bought junk you know, like I bought stuff that should be stewed. So I'm going to try to go ahead and um, stew. And um, I'm going to make sure that I use bone broth. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, like just all the right things. Now, in addition to that, he wants me to, my doctor, Dr. Lux, he wants me to also focus on fitness, right? So you know that I'm obsessed with doing lots and lots and lots of walking, but what I've instigated, and I've been telling you I'm about to do this every day, but I'm actually gonna do it every day, which is I need to mandatory spend an hour on my Concept2 Model C rowing machine every day for the rest of my life. Now, I'm not talking about going in and doing, you know, a 42 kilometer marathon or anything like that. I'm talking, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about slow jogging, slow walking. This would be, this is slow rowing. 
and I started up a subreddit on uh, Reddit called Slow Rowing. It's uh, reddit.com slash r slash slow rowing. And um, basically it's slow. Like yesterday I only spent half an hour, but I really want to spend an entire hour every day for the rest of my life. Watching TV, watching, listening to podcasts, listening to um, uh, audiobooks, listening to the big broadcast watching TV, watching movies, etc. And what I've been doing, and this is what I consider slow jogging, is averaging around a three minutes per 500 meters, which is wicked slow. Like when I was uh, on the crew team and I did sprints, like we were easily easy at a minute 80, a minute 70, like per every 500 meters. So the pace is like, 150 I don't know like I was the fastest on the team um, because I'm just big and strong I'm not light you can have you can have two of the three like they say you can have big strong but not light you can have light strong but not big you can have big and light but not strong see how that goes so um, so yeah 23, 24, 22 strokes per minute and, you know, three minutes per 500 meters, which is extremely, extremely, uh, just like, like, la-di-da, la-di-da. Like, at that rate, my heart rate never goes above 100, 110, something like that. Like, it's really just... I, I talk about it uh, on a post I made, which is to say that two of the most or three of the most valuable things about slow rowing for the rest of your life every day is that you can always decide to do a power 10 or a power 20. You can always decide to do an entire high intensity workout on the ERG. But if you don't, if you spend 60, 45 to 60 minutes just going like row 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 your boat like basically if you were in your street clothes uh, in Central Park and you wanted to take your girl out for a rowboat ride like you don't want to power out there you want to gently you know jug 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 you don't want to get sweaty on her you want to be able to talk poetry with her and and sweet talk her and smile at her and listen to her. And so rowing is just your secondary activity. That's what I'm talking about. So what are the benefits? The benefits are you get a full body compression and extension. You go from huddled up with your head almost to your knees and your ankles almost to your buttocks and your um, arms fully extended to the at the catch and then you you know pull out uh, to the to the finish and your legs are extended your arms are contracted your shoulders are are um, your shoulders are contracted your back gets a, a stretch your your glutes get a stretch you breathe and you also you know kind of pump air you know, what is it they call it? Uh, uh, push out the bad air, in with the good. Out with the bad air, in with the good. If you row, you naturally get into that rhythm of almost walking uh, Buddhism, walking meditation. And, you know, at that point, your, your blood flows, your, your blood gets oxygenated, uh, oxygen goes to your brain, Oxygen goes through your gut. Oxygenated blood goes to your limbs. Uh, Your quads get worked out. Your hammies get worked out. Your calves get worked out. Your shins get worked out. Your glutes. Uh, Your entire uh, anterior, is that right? Anterior chain gets worked out. Even if you're doing it slowly, it's very similar to the way a physiologist, if you have a torn ACL, works your knee with a machine or a 
a uh, physiotherapist does it. That is what you'll be doing every day. You'll be doing physical therapy, range of moment, movement. Uh, you know, I'm on a CPAP all night, a, a BiPAP. So I have a machine that breathes for me, but I bet you an hour on the on the rowing machine would drive in breath and drive out breath and increase oxygenization 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 like you wouldn't believe. Um, so uh, I do not want to while I'm getting used to this diet. I don't want to exert myself too much. So. I think that even trying to do uh, really casual rowing for an hour after not having done it all summer and all spring is still tiring for me. You know what I mean? I'll admit it to you. I'm not, I, when I get tired, I stop. If I feel better, I jump on again and finish another 10, 15, 20 minutes. But my goal is in the short term to do a consistent steady state 250, two minutes, 50 seconds to three minutes per 500 meter slow row every day. And I'm committing to it too. I'm actually, you'll find this funny. I'm making a, uh, a stamp, like literally an ink stamp that has um, on it, it has, It has uh, date, type, distance, time, pace, cals, HR, and notes. And I'm going to stamp that into every page of a, uh, a rowing log that I ordered from Moleskine, which is like, what, f 5 inches by 8.9 inches or 5 inches by 8. Um, I got one that was squared and customized to be like, you know, have my name Abraham and then uh, row log one or erg, erg log one or something like that. And I'm going to stamp each page with that and I'm going to fill it out one, uh, one exercise per page. And what I'd like to do, because I'm so fascinated what, by um, the book Slow Jogging, is this concept that if you choose a number of minutes during which to exercise. Like if you do it for 60 minutes every day, you'll be able to see over time if you start becoming more efficient with your engine. And if over time, um, an hour equals 9,500 meters or 10,000 meters. And then in a year, um, an hour gets you 12,000 meters or 15,000 meters or 20,000 meters. Who knows? Because like when I say slow rowing or slow jogging, the secret of the whole thing is that as you become more efficient, as your body becomes more efficient, as your heart, your VO2 max, your breathing, your blood, your um, muscles, your efficiency, as you become stronger and stronger, the same amount of effort will move the boats, will move your erg, will move your body, will move your walking, will move everything much faster. You'll have more of a spring to your step the moment you become accustomed to it. And you will naturally feel, without you even realizing it, that as casual a row that you had done before is actually much faster. You know, like I know I'm saying three minute mile, uh, three minute 500 uh, meters, but the truth is is that um, Generally most people who are rowing slow are rowing a lot quicker than that, but as your body adapts you uh, Move forward. So that's my update. I feel pretty good on the carnivore diet. What really what what I notice is that um, You really get full in kind of an uncomfortable way that never happened when I was, you know, eating beans or rice. Rice and beans, like I can eat those all day long and never get really full. But you put some burger and eggs and butter in me and all of a sudden, like, like, I feel like my stomach is halfway in my throat. So maybe that's what overeating feels like when you feel it. 
or maybe my cardiologist Dr. Luck said that is probably one step further than satiety than being satiated um, and which is you know uh, a few bites too far anyway I'll come back and uh, I don't know what I missed but hopefully we can keep this continuing uh, top line notes I haven't gotten to a straight through 60 minutes a day yet uh, they say that the um, journal is going to get here on October 5th and I should have my stamp ready by then so in my head October the 5th or October the 1st um, today is the 26th I'm aiming at making October the 1st the first day where I do um, a guaranteed 60 minutes of slow rowing every day and that that's on top of any walking or, or, or anything else like that. Like, no, it's not either walking or rowing. It's anything else during the day, like walking or perambulating or slow jogging or being on the treadmill. Like, when it gets to 6 p.m., I have to be on the ERG to watch my shows. So there we are. I'll come back to you in a second, and we'll go through how to contact me. Welcome back to Season 4, Episode 17 of The Chris Abraham Show. You can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can reach me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. That can be a phone call, which I won't answer. That can be a text I probably won't respond to unless you describe exactly who you are and what you want. You can't just be like, what's Um... It can work for WhatsApp, Signal, um, Telegram. You can find me there. Um, I'm Chris-Abraham at uh, Tumblr. I am Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham, YouTube.com, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham, Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham, Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. Um, what else? Um, if you want to figure out where this uh, podcast is uploaded, it's uploaded to Anchor.com slash Chris Abraham. Here comes a fighter jet. in Virginia, about uh, a mile away from the Pentagon, and half a mile, a quarter mile away from um, uh, the uh, uh, the National Cemetery, and uh, oftentimes they will do flybys for very special uh, people who are who die and are being buried at the National Memorial, so National Memorial Cemetery, so you know, we'll see what happens. Either that or it's a North Korean bomb and we're very quickly going to be um, turned into complete and utter um, into dust. Alright, I think that's it. 
Merci beaucoup. Gracias, 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 gracias. And uh, arrivederci. I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.